Jonah says, But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice, say it with me, of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Verse number 10. And the Lord spake to the fish. Isn't it an awesome thing to know that the God and the creator we serve can talk to a fish and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the Lord spake to the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. I'm dealing with that thought one more time again this Sunday on the power of thanksgiving or the power of giving thanks. I like what Miss Pam said just a minute ago. She said, I would like to thank God. I thought this was going to go perfect with the sermon. And she gave God thanks for what God has performed and done in her life just this week. We ought to thank God. Amen. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. I pray now that you'd bless the preaching of your word. You would strengthen our hearts and our fellowship to thee. And God, I pray that you'd ever give us a thankful heart. In Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Last week, perhaps, well, two weeks ago, for the last two weeks, we dealt with John chapter number 6. And I love that phrase. But what are they among so many? What was he talking about? The two sardines and the five hush puppies in the lunch box of a lad. And I love the story about the little lad that gave what he had and he went away glad. And that's a wonderful story and it's found in all four Gospels. But when you come to John's Gospel, John records that Jesus gave thanks over what they had. And it was the disciples that said, but what are they among so many? And Jesus had too much thanksgiving for the scale. Too much thanksgiving for the scale. Because when you operate in the realm of the power of thanksgiving, you cannot measure the power that it produces. 5,000 men were fed with two sardines and five hush puppies. 5,000 men were fed with a lunch from a lad. And I'm telling you, there is power in Thanksgiving. It outweighed the scale. They said, we don't have enough money. We can't feed this crowd. And then the other disciples said, but wait a minute. What are these, what are they among so many? And Jesus said, don't worry about that. Let's just thank God. Let's have a time of Thanksgiving. And then it overwhelmed the scale. You can't compute God. You can't calculate God. If you're going to try to run your life and try to calculate the goodness of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, your computer, your calculator will say error. It can't handle it. But when we come to our text verse this morning, we come to the book of Jonah, and the Bible says in verse number 9 of chapter number 2, that Jonah sacrificed with the voice of thanksgiving, and verse number 10, the fish got sick. Jesus had too much thanksgiving for the scales, and it was Jonah that had way too much thanksgiving for the well. Jesus had too much thanksgiving for the scale. Jonah had too much thanksgiving for the well. You say, well, Brother Adam, how do you know that it was a well? The Bible says that God prepared a great fish. You must be assuming that it was a well that swallowed Jonah. You're correct. But I'm telling you what Jesus said in the Gospels. He said, as Jonah was in the belly of the well three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. And as Jesus said that Jonah was in the belly of the well, I think I'm going to bank on Jesus' word any day of the week. And before I even get into the message, 
message before you get critical over the idea of a man living in the belly of a whale for three days and three nights and surviving it. I'm going to tell you something. I'm so much of a Bible believer that I believe that story. I believe that it's true. It's not fiction. It's very true. Jesus even made reference to it in the Gospels. But if my Bible tells me that Jonah swallowed a whale, I'll believe that too. Because it's the word of God and it's forever settled in heaven. Can I run a rabbit real quick? They wrote a song years ago. The Bible says it. I believe it. That settles it. I'm going to tell you something. They got that song dead wrong. Because it don't matter whether you believe it or not. If God says it, whether you believe it or not, that settles it. And he created the earth and the heavens and the sun and the moon and the stars in six literal 24-hour days. I have no trouble. If Listen, if Mary can produce a child without conception and that child grow up and live perfect and holy and that child could not be put to death but had to say father into thy hands I commend my spirit and die and three days later get up on his own accord I have no trouble believing that Jonah survived the belly of the well for three days and three nights Now that's my soapbox. Now let's get into the message. Here we go. Chapter number one. I want you to flip back a page and we'll look at a couple of verses real quickly about the power of thanksgiving. The power of thanksgiving. Too much thanksgiving for the scales. Jonah had too much thanksgiving for the well. Look if you would in verse number one. The Bible says, now the word of the Lord came unto who? Jonah. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah. And he says, arise and go unto Nineveh. And what do I want you to do in that city? I want you to cry against it. I want you to go and preach. What do you want me to preach? The same thing Noah preached. The the same thing John preached. The same thing Jesus preached. The same thing that we preach today. I want you to preach to a wicked generation righteousness and holiness. But watch what the Bible says. Jonah arose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So first I want you to notice an individual that was unthankful for his vocation. He was unthankful for his vocation. Now if he was thankful for the vocation or the job criteria that God had allowed him to be and allowed him to be a preacher of his day, he would have ran an interview and preached against it. But obviously he had gotten to a place of unthankfulness on his vocation. He was unthankful for the call of God in his life. Can I tell you that we ought to be thankful for the call of God in our life. You ought to be appreciative and grateful for the voice of God. God in your life. Are you aware of the fact that there are some people to this day that have not heard the call of God and the voice of God and want to know God and they're seeking God and they're trying to find God but they've not heard from God but yet you sit here today with a Bible in your lap and Jesus in your heart and you wasn't just born in any country but you was born in the United States of America where the gospel is being preached and the gospel is being taught and you're not running through the jungle of Africa and you're not having to live in the sand pits of Afghanistan or Iraq and you've been privileged to the great knowledge of the gospel and you know the the power of the gospel and you know that you're on your way to heaven. You realize you could have been born in another country. You realize you didn't have to be born in America and you could have been born in a country that forsook God and didn't know God and you'd be on your way to hell but aren't you glad this morning that God saw fit to allow you to be born in a land, in a land where the gospel runs free and runs true and runs dear to my heart. It ought to run dear to your heart and thank God for the day you heard the voice of God. I'm glad for the day God called me into the ministry. Well, I could preach an hour and a half on the thankfulness of the vocation of God. But not only was he unthankful for his vocation, but the Bible said that he arose to flee from the presence of God. You've got 
to be a box. Hey, you got to be a fry short of a Happy Meal to want to run away from the presence of God. You got to be a brick shy of a load to want to get away from the presence of God. You got to be a crayon short of a crayon box to want to get away from the presence of God. You've lost your mind. You're crippled too high for crutches. You're as confused as a termite in a yo-yo if you want to run away from the presence of God. But I'm telling you why he don't want to be around God. Not only was he unthankful, but he was ungrateful. He was unthankful for his vocation and he was ungrateful for his location. I'm telling you something. Jonah had this great idea. I'm going to run from God. Can I tell you something this morning? You cannot outrun God. And I'm telling you, the night he convicted my heart and the night he spoke to me, I was at church. And I said, man, if I could just get out of here. <laughs> Have, man, man, remember that first time he called your name? I said, boy, if I could just get out of here. Man, if, if, if that preacher would just shut up and if, and if he'd just hurry up and dismiss and hopefully they won't sing two verses of uh, Just As I Am. And I'll never forget, I ran out those back doors. I was the first one in the car that night. And I thought, man, if my mom and dad don't hurry up, my Lord, I'm ready to get out of this place. And and guess what? We drove almost 45 minutes back to the house. I walked in our front door. I made sure it was locked. I walked down the hallway, jumped in my bedroom. I made sure the door was locked. I made sure that I was sleeping underneath the covers and the lights were out. Made sure the sound maker was on and I was trying to blur God out. But are you aware of the fact that I couldn't outrun God? He walked right down my, right down the hallway of my house, walked in the bedroom with the door shut shut and he found out that I was sleeping on the top bunk that night not the bottom bunk and he walked up the stairs crawled in bed with me jumped under the covers and said boy you're lost I said man you can't outrun God I'm telling you, Jonah was ungrateful for his location. I'm telling you, there's been times in my life where I've had to look back and say, man, I don't know if I'd have ever got out of the situation that I was in until I got grateful for my location. Because if you're not careful, you will become ungrateful and unthankful of where God has put you in the ministry. Where God, hey, the Bible says, bloom where you planted. Amen? And listen, we all want to be better. We all want to be greater. We all want to be bigger. We all want to be stronger. But I'm telling you, sometimes God's got you right where he wants you, whether you like it or not. The best thing you can do is to be grateful and try not to run from the presence of God. There's been many a time I thought to myself, boy, if I could just pack my bags and if I could just leave and if I could just go to this church or that church and, I've, and the phone calls have come and I thought, man, if I could just go there and Everything would be all right. But I'm going to tell you something. You run from where God wants you. You run from the presence of God. The very next verse, there was a storm that arose in Jonah's life. You better be careful about being ungrateful about your location and unthankful about your vocation. He was unmindful. He was neglectful. He was careless over his obligation. His obligation was to go unto Nineveh. His obligation was to go preach the gospel, preach righteousness, but he found himself running from the presence of God unto Tarshish. He was unholy in his reputation. Watch what unthankfulness and ungratefulness leads to. The Bible said in verse number 10, the Bible said that he got on this boat. He was on his way down to down to. Tarshish and the Bible says this that the men that he was with in the boat were afraid and they said unto Jonah why hast thou done this what, listen to this listen to this for the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them and then they said unto him what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm to us for the sea is wrought and was tempest can I tell you something when you get back slid on God and you become an ungrateful and an unthankful Christian, the world don't want nothing to do with you. <laughs> I'm telling you, the worst kind of people to ever get around is somebody that's saved, somebody that's born again, somebody that's blood washed, and they're unthankful, and they're ungrateful, and they're unmindful. You don't want to be around them, but I'm telling you, who don't like them more than anybody? The world. The world hates that crowd. 
I mean, you're already tagged as it is being a Christian. But when you're running from the presence of God, the world will notice. He was unholy in his reputation. He was unmindful for his obligation, ungrateful in his location, and unthankful for his vocation. I'm trying to get somewhere. He was unappreciative of his salvation. You know the story. The Bible says the men picked up Jonah and threw him overboard with no life vest. And the Bible says that as they threw him overboard, look at verse number 17. Now the Lord had prepared. <laughs> he, done been, he done been prepared for this. You can't run from God. You can't outrun God. He will get you. If the high sheriff of heaven knows your address, you can't outrun God. And now the Lord had prepared a what? Great fish. To do what? Chew up. Tear up. No, he prepared a great fish to swallow up. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. I want you to look at verse number one, if you would, of chapter two. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. He's alive. He can't believe it. And he said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. He was unappreciative of his salvation. Are you aware of the fact had that well not just all of a sudden came along and appeared out of the same place that Jonah was in? He could have been eaten by a shark. You think those guys were going to throw him a life vest and come back for him? No, buddy. When the, when the sea calmed down, they put it in high gear. They said, get out of here. That, he, he's as good as dead. Go, 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 go. That's what the world does anyway. That's what the world does anyway. They get what they want out of you. He paid his fare. The, the, the man taking money on boat, he got his money. And when he was done with Jonah, he threw him overboard and said, go, 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 go. That's what they do to God's people. That's what the world will do to you. It'll give you all the drugs and alcohol and sex you want. It'll give you all the pornography you want. And when the devil's done with you and the world's done with you, they'll leave you in the dust. Say amen right there. They don't give a flip about you. And when you get to the point where you're about to die, the only hope you got is God. And you better hope and pray to God if you're backslid, he's got a fish prepared for you. I said, you better hope to God he's got a fish prepared for you. Amen. And when he got in the belly of the fish, he went and threw himself a pity party. The Bible said that he cried unto the Lord. Why did he cry to? I don't blame him. I don't blame him. I don't blame him. And he cried unto the Lord by reason of his affliction. His affliction. He wasn't wanting to get right with God. He wasn't, hey, he wasn't wanting to get things right with the Lord. He was still running from God. And he was a weeping and he was a crying and he was a, I mean, just a whiny baby. Seaweed wrapped around his head. He's submarining down to the depths so that his ears are popping. He can smell everything that, that wells ate. Can you, can you imagine the situation that Jonah was in? He was unappreciative for his salvation. It's a wonder God didn't send a shark. And he wouldn't have had to hear the whining and crying of a backslid preacher. He could have just took him home. But aren't you glad we serve a God of second chances? And he sends, he sends us fish without teeth. <laughs> Thank God for the fish without teeth. I'm telling you, if, if bless God, if some of you would have, if, if he would have sent the shark and the judge, we'd all be in jail. We, I said we'd all be in jail. But he's a God of second chances and he sends fish without teeth. Yeah, you are. Take a lap right there because you ought to be in jail. 
And when you get down to verse number 10, our text verse, we come to verse number 10 and we've got a fish that's seasick. And we've got a preacher in verse 10 that is enjoying the first seafood Thanksgiving ever recorded in your Bible. And the Bible said he sacrificed unto God thanksgiving. Where? In the belly of the well. And what did the Bible say? And the fish vomited Jonah on dry ground. Write this down somewhere in your Bible. We better write this down. Write this down. Write this. This will be good for you. Ready? There's going to be times where you can't cry your way out. There's going to be times where you can't climb your way out. And believe me, we'll try. We're human. There'll be times where you'll try to claw your way out. And then there's going to be times where you think you can cut your way out. But if I'm, not, if I'm reading my Bible correctly, verse number 9 says that Jonah, you know how he got out? He clapped his way out. You ever seen anybody clap their hands when they're not thankful? What happens when your team hits a home run? You clap. You're thankful he got it over the wall. What about when your favorite race car driver crosses the finish line? You clap, you scream, you rejoice. I'm telling you, Jonah was experienced. <laughs> I know what I've done, brother. God, I've been looking for my case knife, double X. Double X, case knife. I'd been, been trying to cut my way out of that sucker. But that's not an option with God. I would have tried to climb my way out of his throat. But Jonah was in the belly of the well. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I, y'all sing with me, seaweed. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me, and about that time he got plunged. God put a plunger to the face of that fish and sucked him out because instead of trying to claw his way out, instead of trying to climb his way out, he was clapping his way out of the mess he got himself into. I'm telling you, that's how God's people can get out of the mess they're in is when they offer up thanksgiving in their situation. Can I give you three areas where he gave thanksgiving? And I'll try to be as brief as I possibly can. Listen, the well got sick when he heard the shouting and he felt the clapping. And I'm telling you when that happened was not after he was released, not after he was freed, but in the middle of that, in the middle of that belly, in the middle of that well, in that place where you don't think you could have thanksgiving, Jonah had thanksgiving in everything given thanks for what this is the will of God concerning you let me give you three areas number one he gave thanks unto God in a deep place thanksgiving was offered in a deep place verse number three verse number six for thou hast cast me into the deeps in the midst of the sea and verse number six I went down to the bottoms of the mountains the earth with her bars was about me forever his ears were popping he was so low he that well when he that well took Jonah probably he was trying to fight for his life and all of a sudden the well come up swallowed him whole he ended up in the belly and the well took a nosedive and Jonah said, it was like I was in a prison. I was like in the bars. And I'm telling you, God knows how to get you in a real deep place. 
Because when you get down in a deep place, there's no limelight, there's no fame, there's no spotlight. Matter of fact, if God ever puts you in a deep place, that's a place where no one can see and no one can hear, just you and God. And can I tell you something about those deep places that God puts us in? They're horrible. They're hard. They're harsh. They're hostile. But when God puts you where you can't be seen or heard, you'll be thankful for the times that you were seen and you were heard. It's like that preacher that came to the pulpit every week. Did it... People just, they said it just gets old. Every Sunday, he thanks God for the day before he starts praying. Lord, we want to thank you for this day. Every prayer, thank you for this day. One day he got to church. The skies were black. The thunder was a rolling. The lightning was a flashing. And the beads of rain was falling down. And one of the smart mouth members said, I'd like to see if he's going to thank God for this day. Half of us couldn't even get here. The storm was so bad. They got to church. Preacher got up. He opened up, said, I want to open up my word of prayer. And they said, here we go. Let's see if he thanks him for this mess. I mean, tornadoes everywhere. And the preacher said, Lord, we want to thank you for this day. That not every day is like this day. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, it may be, you might be in a deep place, and it may be where there's no fame and no limelight, and it's a horrible place and a hard place and a harsh place, but you can still thank, according to Jonah, you can still thank God and say, thank God, not every day is like this day. I know some of you is mad because I'm still preaching on Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving's done past. Problem is you're unthankful for the Thanksgiving message. <laughs> you're ungrateful we're still dealing with it. Ain't my fault. You didn't get enough. I guess you ought to get enough of the first two times. God said we're going to go around third time. Round three on Thanksgiving. I'm telling you, he got into a deep place in his life and Jonah was thankful in the deep. And I'm telling you, when you start thanking God for the deep places in your life, you know who it's going to make sick? The world. Boy, it makes them sick when you're thankful and all, all that your world has collapsed around you and God's put you in a hole and nobody knows where you're at. And, and it, I'm telling you, when you start thanking God in that area, in that arena, I'm telling you, it'll make the world sick. You know where he was thankful? Number two, he was thankful in a dark place. Dark. I wonder if he had one of those military flashlights they keep advertising on TV for 1995. Buy it now, get two. <laughs> Give me a break. Be ran over by a Humvee. It can be frozen. It can be dethawed. You can put it in boiling water and it'll still shine. How many bought one of them lights? He had no flashlight. He didn't have no candlelight. I'm going to tell you something. For three days and three nights, he couldn't see his hand in front of his face. And Jonah reminds us to thank God and praise God, not just in the light, but sometimes we are to thank him and praise him in the dark. Are you, you really want me to thank God for this dark place in my life? Let me ask you a question. Is God good all the time or just sometime? If he's good all the time, you might want to thank him for the dark room. He might be producing a negative. He might be fixing to start printing on your heart things you've never seen before. I'm talking in a dark place, in a dark room, and I don't know about y'all, I, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because I've been there. And no, I don't like the dark place. I don't like the deep place. But it's there where God develops you. You are his negative. And God can't develop you and bring you to fruition unless he puts you in a place where there is no light. God help us this morning to when we get in those dark places, whether we're standing next to a casket or whether we're standing next to cancer or we're standing next to an area in our life where we've completely lost control, we thank God. Jonah did. And you'll stay in your well until you learn how to thank him for that dark place in your life. 
By the way, I think it was D.L. Moody or Spurgeon said this, true character is found in the dark. And the question is, who are you when the lights are out and no one's looking or listening to you? Who are you? True character is revealed in the dark. Those dark places. Those deep places. But I'm going to tell you where he got to thanking God. Verse number 17. He started thanking God in a divine place. No longer did he see a well. But he saw salvation. But he was supposed to be dead. You run from God, you ain't going to run that long. If you've made up your mind you're going to run from God and you're done with God and you're finished with God, you ain't going to run for long. If you're his child, you ain't going to run. Hey, well, I got a youngin'. I got a, several youngins. And I'm going to tell you something. They can run for daddy, from daddy for a little while. We're going to catch them. I'm going to tell you what happened last night. No, Avery boy, he, you know, he's he trying to learn English. He's trying to learn the language. And, you know, I'm trying to be a little patient. Man is trying to be, he's got to learn. he got to learn. And he walked over to our Christmas tree last night. He grabbed that ball at the bottom with glitter on it. I leaned up and I said, Nick! He jumped. He knew he did wrong, little devil. He knew he was doing wrong. People think they're dumb. They're smarter than you think. He reached up there and grabbed again. I heard a voice from the kitchen. It said, nah! It's mama. Was that him? Oh. I about to call him out. Man, I looked at him. He looked at mommy. They made eye contact. I was, sitting there, I was just watching. I said, boy, it's going to fit real good with the message if this plays out like I think it's going to play out. And by four kids, you know how it's going to play out before it plays out. He reached up and he grabbed that ball again. And she said, no, no, you ain't supposed to touch that ball. And he goes, he pulls his hand and goes, just like Jonah. And then he done something devilish and satanic. He looked up and saw mama looking. And he reached up again while she was looking. And he grabbed that ball and went. Paul, Paul, grandmother, Marsha, y'all pl plug your ears. Plug, y'all may need to slip out of service, go take a smoke break, come back. Y'all need to just plug your ears. Don't listen to what I'm about to say. Y'all get out of here. Net, you may have to leave too. You might get out of here for this one. I thought it was thunder from another world. But in the kitchen, I heard. It was the wrath of Almighty Amanda. Camp ran under the couch. I ran to my bedroom. The kids went diving for the, they were going to the basement. And Avery, Avery saw what he had done. And guess what he did? The devil. He went. <laughs> I mean, it looked like the Grinch had stole Christmas. Medical. She could fly around the kitchen. She looked like the Daytona 500. She was sideways on that slick surface. But when her feet hit that carpet, she caught traction. And Avery could not outrun Mama. And when she got to him, she picked him. I said, a pow, a boom, crush. She picked it. Don't you say poor Avery. He, she said, Bless God, don't you touch the Christmas tree. <laughs> you know what happened? She sat him down. And he didn't go crying. And I mean, normally the other kids, they just cry and boo-hoo and scream for two hours. 
him jaws puffed up. Satan himself come out of his head, out of his eyeballs. If I did what he did in that floor, it'd take six doctors and 12 paramedics to get me up out of this floor. If I tried to demonstrate what he did. But, you know, all the, boy, the kids were laughing. They were like, he's, mommy, he's pitching a tantrum. <laughs> he just fell on the floor and rolled around and was screaming. Now, when he gets a little bit older, you get pay panks for that too. You, <laughs> thank you, Brother Ken. Amen right there. That's God you're getting. <laughs> hey, you mouth back, you're going to get it again. And we're going to bring you down a few buttonholes is what I was told when I was growing up. You say, why would you be so mean to that baby? Hey, why would you scare that baby like that? Because there's going to come a day when daddy's not around and mama's not around. And there's going to be a heavenly father that'll be around. And I know that if God speaks to him and God says no, and he turns his finger to God and shakes his finger at God, the same father that used to chase him around Cool Creek Court, the same, the same thing will happen, but in a different way. And there'll be a flash, holy God, that'll chase him down and take him away if he says no. They better learn to respect mom and daddy down here when they're little so that they'll respect God when they're older. For your life and you better like it because it's salvation. It may be a well and it may be a weed and it may be a place that Jonah called hell verses one and two. He said, out of the belly of hell I cried. I preached one time on what in the well is going on. Didn't go good either. And while he's in that belly, all of a sudden, something happens and he no longer sees the fish. He don't smell the fish. But in verse number nine, he offers up thanksgiving. And he vowed a vow and said, I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. You know how you can have thanksgiving in a deep place, a dark place, a dangerous place, and a deadly place? It's right here in verse 7. I'm done. Mandy, you come on the piano. When my soul fainted within me. Boy, I love these words right here. I remembered the Lord. He said, I ain't got nothing to thank you for, and I ain't got nothing to be thankful about. And I am in a dark place, and I'm in a deep place, and I'm in a dangerous place. But I'm telling you, it's a divine place, and you better get to the place where you remember the Lord. I don't know what all went through that boy's mind uh, the three days and three nights that he was there, but I do know what went on the last couple of hours he is there. His mind went back to the day when he met for the first time the Lord, and the Lord had picked him up, and the Lord had saved his soul, and the Lord had called him to preach, and the Lord had put a fire in his bones that couldn't be shut up, and there was a day in the life of Jonah where he remembered the Lord, and all of a sudden he started thanking God. Say, so ain't thankful. Have you remembered the Lord? I tell you what else he did. Not only did he remember the Lord, he repented to the Lord. He said, I will pay that, that I have vowed. I want to get right with God. I want to turn my life around. I don't want to be in the, if I'm going to die in the belly of the well, bless God, I'm going to die, in the, I'm going to die right with God. <laughs> And he repented to the Lord. He remembered the Lord. But then guess what else he did? He said, I will sacrifice unto thee a voice of thanksgiving. He rejoiced in the Lord. He tried to cry his way out. He tried to claw his way out. He tried to complain his way out. He tried to gripe his way out. But when you read the latter part of chapter number two, you'll find out that Jonah clapped his way out. He clapped his way out. 
And then he was released of the Lord. Verse number 10. And the Lord spake to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out on dry ground. It was only until Jonah got thankful that God started moving in his life. It was only until Jonah got thankful until God started moving on his behalf. It was only till Jonah got thankful until the fish got sick. Jesus offered up thanksgiving before they ever fed the 5,000. Jonah gave thanksgiving before that fish ever vomited him out. Thanksgiving. It's powerful. It's so powerful it'll make a fish sick. Thanksgiving is so powerful it will make a fish seasick. Guess where he vomited Jonah out at? Guess where he spewed him out at? What does it say? He, well, guess where he vomited him out at? Dry ground. Does anybody know what dry means in the Bible? Dry as cracker juice. Go take a bunch of crackers, chop them up, put them in a cup. That's how dry it was. Dry as cracker juice. When Jonah landed on, on the ground and put his feet back on, on land, guess what? He was on dry land. That fish had to beach himself. That fish had to give his life for Jonah. I'm going to tell you something. When you live a life of thanksgiving, this ain't in the notes. This is from God. I, I mean, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Right on time. When you start living a life of thanksgiving, those things that have hindered you and held you back around you, will start dying. Last time I checked, wells don't live in dry land. They live in the ocean, in the water. But because Jonah got so thankful, the fish literally beached himself. Fish gave his life to get Jonah on dry ground. That is the power of thanksgiving. You say, well, I'm in a deep place. Thank him for it. I'm in a dark place. Thank him for it. I'm in a dangerous place. Thank him for it. Hey, Brother Adam, I'm in, I'm in, a, place, I'm in a place where I don't even know if God exists. You might want to thank him that he allowed you to come here today to hear that there is a God who still hears and answers prayer. It's the power of thanksgiving. Lord, we love you. Thank you for the wells of our life. Thank you for the fish of our life. Lord, that put us on the right track. There may be somebody here that's right in slap dab in the belly of the well as I'm preaching right now. I pray, God, that they'd be thankful for that well. Thankful for that dark place. Thankful for that deep place. Thank you, God, for that deadly place that you've put them in so that you can deliver them and release them and free them from the bondage that they're in. Lord, we better thank you for the well. We better thank you for the belly. We better thank you for that fish that you've brought in our life. Unexpected, unannounced, we were unaware of it. But God, you sent it our way for a reason. I pray that we'd leave here today with a different outlook on life. And we wouldn't just thank you for the times of light, but we'd thank you for the times of dark. 
And Lord, before you ever answer our prayer and before you ever move on our behalf and before you ever do anything for us ever again, help us go ahead and thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Just like Jesus did. Just like Jonah did in the belly of the well. Lord, bless this time of invitation. This altar, I pray it gets stirred today like never before. In Jesus' name. Let's stand together. Praise the Lord. Do you remember when you were drowning in a sea of sin? Going down for the last time when you called. Good song.